Episode 6 definitely felt like the beginning of the end. I don't want it to end. I I feel like it's a loss. But yeah, it's been fun so far. Okay, let's watch episode 7. I'm enlightened now. But plug. So he's reviewing his own enlightenment, I guess, but or pre-enlightenment. I'm enlightened now. In the cycle of your mind. I mean, light. But plants. Clancy, I found a planet that you like. We'll see about that. Normal I guess the computer's age. back to normal. This planet has rivers of wine and mescaline but. fruit. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you didn't hear the song, but... but. Plug. I'm enlightened. I'm enlightened. Oh God. I made one that looks just like you, except it's made out of cream. Is that cool? Cream C. So I guess because he got some momentary relief from his anxiety, he assumes he's enlightened and that he doesn't need to do anything else. And that makes a lot of sense. Enlightenment aside, because I have no experience with that at all. I know that when I am going through a rough time and there's something I'm trying to figure out, I sometimes try to take easy outs. Like you find something comforting and that comforting thing allows you to not worry about the problem so much, but it actually doesn't solve anything. It just kind of leaves you in circles, you know? If you're having hardship, if you're in a situation where you don't know how to proceed and there's something really bothering you, it probably is a sign that there's something you're not doing right or that you believe some kind of false assumption you believe some kind of lie that's actually harming you even though you think it, it helps you to get past it you kind of have to be very honest and look at really all the things inside you that are holding you back and it's very painful to disrupt them it's way easier to kind of find another way out like find a scapegoat like it's not really my fault or you can find some other way of looking at it like well i don't need that anyway like kind of sour grapes kind of thing so many pitfalls when you're in that state it's really difficult and painful to look at those things honestly and it's way easier just to find another way out what clancy's doing is very real it makes a lot of sense nice always good always good i can't tell if cream C as a design is oh, either God. Genius or lazy? Genius because it's lazy. I actually prefer Cream C's design because I like Clancy so much. I like his normal form better than all the alien forms he hey takes. Man. It's gotta be one in here. Yeah! This is episode about Who's there? Material possessions and clutter. He was throwing out everything in his house earlier. Must I am deaf. Ooh. It's nice to meet you. My name's Clancy. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my throat. That little tar baker took my hose. You mind That's if a tarp. we uh, walk and talk so I can get the hose back? That's so my new thing, tarp baker. Do you have any advice for people who are like dealing with death in their own lives? The best thing you could possibly do for yourself be super present for those moments. And, like sitting with the dead body or 100% like sitting with the placenta. These are the moments of primal reality that we just don't get in our yeah. daily lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. They're actively kept from yes. us by an elaborate system the conspiracy nobody talks about the death industrial complex what I is this it. can, can we talk that. about this well i can i can tell you for death that's true you're kind of shielded from it until it happens to someone close to you but the u.s is really the the mafia dawn of this kind of cover-up it's so strange to think about this we can't not be insulated from death for a couple reasons. One, we couldn't possibly comprehend the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who die daily, monthly, yearly, whatever, except on a very conceptual objective level. We can't really feel that. Part of it is that our brains are just not evolved to understand large numbers of people. The death of one close family member will always have more impact than hearing about the death of hundreds or thousands. Our brains don't have the, the space, they don't have the capacity to really understand what that means. And I'm not sure that it would be good if we did. One of the themes I like best about this show is the theme of accepting your own death as an inevitability and really coming to grips with that. And I think she's right that spending time with dead bodies or spending time with newborns is a way to kind of force yourself to confront that fact. There's certain moments that just make you open your eyes. I think if you heard about it a lot or if you were exposed to it a lot, I think maybe the opposite would happen. I think you might just end up being jaded. You might end up caring less. It would be interesting to hear the perspective of someone who works with dead bodies. Mortician? Is that what you call it? I wonder if they have any perspective on it or if they just get cold to it. Tell me what these tart bacon mirrors are. Tart bacon mm. mirrors. This is a trial of judgment. See, all these mirrors reflect parts of yourself that you're ashamed of, stuff you try to hide. You have to forgive them. Forgive them? So I guess those are all parts of Clancy that he's hiding from, the things he's trying not to look at. So the history is that you had all these Northern soldiers going down to the South, dying on the battlefield. Mm. Young men who were yes. in Bulmers would follow the battles, battlefield to battlefield, like ambulance chasers. Whoa. So she's talking about the process of embalming. I'm waiting for the conspiracy part. They're doing this and it's actually sort of a sensible innovation for the time. People want their dead sons back. But what happens is that these same men are going, the war is over now, but this is my business. It's only been in the last, honestly, 100, 120 years. These embalmers were really able to push the idea that what they were doing by embalming the body is making it safe. It doesn't really strike me as like this huge conspiracy. I mean, maybe people profited from it, but people also accepted the innovation, right? Like if people wanted it, 
when they wanted it. That means it provided some value for them? No? Am I wrong about that? I have lived in American society most of my life. My understanding of it wasn't so much about hygiene and safety, but that you wanted to be able to have closure by seeing the person one last time. And if you're going to have an open casket, you're not going to want to have them, as morbid as it is to say, you don't want to have them decaying in front of you. Maybe it started under false pretenses, but I think the fact that it's been so widely accepted, you know, it might actually have some utility beyond just hygiene. 100, 150 years is, you know, it's a decent amount of time in society for, for a custom to be practiced. I guess some people just don't like things that are profit oriented, but personally that doesn't bother me so much. But let's see what else she has to say. All of a sudden, it now now starts to, in the early 20th century, move towards this, this financial model. It almost seems to me like she just has a problem with the fact that it's quote profit. But I think that's a larger issue than death. The time she's talking about a long time ago, those were times when we were less specialized in terms of our economy. Like you had a family unit and the family basically did things, you know, you had your own agriculture or whatever. You had your trade. The way things have developed over the last like 200 years, we've specialized. So basically nobody does everything they need to survive. That's every area of our lives, not just death. So it kind of makes sense to me why death would be the same. It does seem a little bit less intimate the way we do it now than what she's describing, you know, laying it out at home, for example. But thinking about doing that today, it feels a little bit weird. Like I wouldn't want to do that. I would gladly pay to have someone else do that for me. I recognize that part of that is that this habit has been ingrained in me. And so that's why it's a little bit uncomfortable for me. But I don't really see this as like this big conspiracy. Just because people get money for something doesn't mean they're doing a bad thing. This capitalist model of yeah. Ah, so this is, that's what it is. I think she's conflating issues. I don't think something being for profit really makes it bad necessarily. I think what she said about um, the embalmers lying about the hygiene, that would be wrong. You know, it would be wrong if it's based on lies or if there's some if they're somehow harming the family or taking advantage of the family, that would be a disservice. But if people are willingly paying for a service and they know what service they're getting and they want that service, then I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. Where you have to turn your body over to a funeral home to take it, drain the blood, put in the chemicals. Wow. True. But they also bury them. I mean, you don't just embalm. You also buy the plot of land and you get a tombstone. And a lot of times it's a package deal. These are all things that I personally wouldn't want to deal with, especially when I'm mourning. I don't think it's an evil plot. Maybe there's an element of that, but I don't think that's the whole story. I advocate for something called home funerals, which is not that complicated. It's just you taking more um, initiative with the death. I think it's fine if you want to do that. In that time, the most important thing maybe is family and being supportive to people around you and also looking for support from people around you. I think even outside of the West, let's say in, in the East, people cremate, but I don't think they cremate them themselves. Maybe in some places, but I think for the most part, you, you take the body somewhere and they cremate it for you and then you have the service with your family. I could be wrong about that. I haven't done any research. I'm just talking out of my ass here. The customs are different, but the idea is the same. You you give it to someone who knows what they're doing so you can you, it frees you up to do the things that are more important. Feeling the feelings that come up and only calling a funeral home when you feel ready. That makes sense. Well, I think they're not mutually exclusive. Me. You can do both, parents. right? When I start getting sick, you know, is when I'll start planning, you know, based this on the statistical probability. Here. I've kind of lost the plot of the animation. It's Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and the devil trying to get into them. I feel like I could do this whole series again on mute, just evaluating the animation. Because I sometimes feel like they tell two different stories. They're like parallel stories, but not the same story. Did your dad die of... I, I killed trillions of beings per second. He stood under a horrid shadow during the sector wars. For people at the end of life. would be like, who, who is your commanding officer? And then, pop back up. He said, what's happening? And I'm like, oh, you're dying. And then he's like, oh, okay. Better go get a pen and a piece of paper. And then he starts telling me what to say to people. It was beautiful. I got lucky that he did yeah. this. I wonder how much of that was written for the character and how much of that was actually Duncan Trussell's experience. Wake an old elevator emperor! Why is it Peppa Pig? Just realized. Stop fighting it. You're gonna be okay. Mm, Face the void. Nice Besides, you're not gonna die yet. That'll be on a rolling chair. Uh -oh. Rolling chair. Oh no. Is he gonna die next episode? This chair is No, I'm in a rolling chair. What are you? Are you a metaphor? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. What? That's me this whole show. Is this a metaphor? Goodbye, blank ball! She said I'm gonna die on a... Uh, I'm gonna die on a rolling chair! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Shit! Reasonable. So, what are you gonna do now? Meditate or something? Oh, jeez. No, that's embarrassing. No, I'm not enlightened anymore. I wasn't enlightened. It doesn't even mean anything. Character growth. Character development. Like, like, 
<laughs> I'm thinking about getting the soundtrack of this show. It's so weird, but like, interesting. Anyway, so seven episodes in, there are some very clear themes that keep coming up again and again. I guess I'll talk about that more later. Why don't we finish the show? So I guess we got one more episode. I'm honestly terrified to finish this show for a number of reasons, but it's gonna happen come this far. So I'll see you for episode eight.